lift our hands to heaven, everybody, and begin to give God thanks for the privilege of being in His presence again this morning. Give Him all the glory. Give Him all the honor. Give Him all the adoration. Celebrate Him from the depth of your heart. Give him praise, give him glory, give him honor. Give him all the adoration. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege that we have to be in your presence again. We celebrate you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Now begin to ask him to speak directly to you this morning by his word begin to ask him to speak to you directly by his word. Lord, speak to me by your word this morning. Your healing word, your delivering word, your word of liberty, your word that breaks captivity, speak directly to me this morning. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. We thank you, Father, this morning for the privilege that we have to be in your presence again, where there is fullness of joy and where the pressures of life disappear. Lord, today by your word, let everyone experience a change of level. Amen. Terminate the hold of every affliction upon any life. Establish the liberty of everyone here present today. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Somebody believe God, say loud amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please you may be seated in his presence. My case is different because I'm redeemed of the Lord. As a covenant child, what afflicts others is not permitted to afflict me. Congratulations. This morning, we are commencing a series of teachings entitled Unveiling Our Heritage of Total Health in Christ. Unveiling Our Heritage of Total Health in Christ. Remember the prophetic theme for this great month of August is I will bring you health and cure. Can we echo that together again? One more time with faith in your heart. Like you really believe it one more time. And that is what God is bringing our way today in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'd like each one of us to be particularly focused today with our heart and our faith engaged. Because as the word of God is going forth, your liberty shall be established. Yeah. Therefore, even in the midst of the word, I'd like you to be ready to begin to pick your own miracles. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Yeah. According to scriptures, just like the choir just sang here gloriously this morning, the word of God is the balm in Gilead. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. As God's word is coming your way this morning, I see your liberty from every destruction being established in the name of Jesus. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 down to verse 22, he said, my son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, for they are life unto them that find them and their health or medicine to all their flesh. That means even as God's word is going forth in your direction this morning, God is administering heavenly medicine into your system right now. And every affliction of the wicked shall be brought to an end. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 8, the Bible said, it said, and then thy light shall break forth as the morning and thine health will spring forth speedily. The meaning of that is that every outburst of revelation 
will always bring an end to affliction. Therefore, as the revelation of God's word is coming your direction this morning, I see every affliction being brought to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. God's word is God's method. God's word is God's method. It is the agent that God engages to deliver his agenda. The word of God. God's word is God's method. When it comes to healing, among others, it is the method of God to engage his word for the purpose of healing. That is why it does not matter what condition you came into this sanctuary with this morning. As God's word is coming in your direction, it is God's medicine, God's healing agent, and it is bringing total perfection in your direction in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe me, say it loud, amen. Therefore, we are going to be exploring, as it were, the virtues that are in God's word that establishes our heritage of total health. And I believe, God, that for each one of us, today will mark the end of every association with sickness and with disease. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. You will no longer be a medical specimen. From today, you shall become the specimen of health. Now, what really is in God's word that heals? What is in the word of God that heals? We are going to be looking at this in detail this morning. Number one is God's word chaos. It is curative. It chaos. It carries inside of it healing virtues. It chaos. In the book of Job chapter 33, verse 21 down to verse 25, the Bible tells us there, it said, his flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness. He said, then is gracious unto him and said, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom just by interpretation. And what is the effect of that? His flesh shall become fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. By simply encountering the revelation of his word, there was a revolution in his health because the word of God is curative. I remember the testimony of a man whose leg was shattered in an accident and he was told that that leg was to be amputated. And he said, no, my leg will not be amputated. And went back home and began to hear the word of God and put the messages of God's servant and father and began to put it, he, put, he was so radical, he put the speakers around the leg that was shattered. And as the word was going forth, the word was going forth, the bones began to rearrange themselves because the word of God is curative. It carries inside of it healing virtues, the capacity to heal whatever is diseased or, or damaged in your system. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, even this morning, as God's word is going forth in your direction, I see healing virtue flowing in your direction. In Luke chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible said, and Jesus was teaching on a certain day. And the power of the Lord was present to heal. He was teaching. So the word of God being taught is adequate enough to attend to every issue of your health. In the book of Luke chapter 6 and verse 17, the Bible tells us there. It said, and he came down with them and stood in the plain in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. He said, which came to hear and be healed of their diseases. What injection is to a nurse is what preaching is with God. When the word of God is going forth, God is simply giving you a spiritual injection, an inoculation that will terminate every affliction. That is why I know you may have come here with any condition, no matter what it is called, tuberculosis, whatever it may have been called, hepatitis, but as God's injection is coming into you by the word, I see that situation terminated in the name of Jesus. 
Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, so that we can understand what is contained inside this injection. He said, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these promises, the things inside the world, he said, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption or the decay that is in the world through lust. You are not permitted to decay like others. You are not permitted to be damaged like others. According to scriptures, there is a package for your total health. We heard the testimony that was read to us. Somebody who had been attacked, the leg was in disgusting shape. It was so bad that the wife left him because of it. But then he came into God's presence and the word of God began to come in his direction. What he had been living with for years, with an offensive odor, the word of God was injected into it by preaching. And suddenly, that leg was totally made whole. I don't know how long you have carried the condition, but God doesn't take long to turn any situation. The length of the condition does not determine the length of the solution. The condition may have been long, but the solution is instant. Therefore, this morning, by the word of the Lord, I see that condition turned for a testimony now. I said, I see that condition turned for a testimony now. I see that condition turned for a testimony now. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. It doesn't matter. The length is not, is not under consideration. As far as God is concerned, every time the word of God is going forth, the answer to the situation is coming forth. And I'd like you to understand the basis upon which you have a right to receive this. Because according to the scripture, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 8 and verse 16 and 17. I'd like you to pay attention. He said, when the evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast the evil spirit with what? With his word. And he healed all that were sick, not touching, only speaking. And here's what the Bible says. That it may be fulfilled which was written. By Isaiah, the, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities, he bare our sicknesses. I'd like you to understand that a price has been paid for your total health. The Bible says that he accomplished this simply by the instrument of his sacrifice. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, he said, who bear our sins upon his body? He said, and that we should read or live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. He was injured for your liberty. He was damaged for you to be repaired. He was, he was buffeted for you to be liberated. Therefore, whatever it is that the enemy may have been doing in your body, I'd like you to understand that by redemption you have been bought with a price and therefore you are not to suffer shame and reproach but to glorify God in your body, which is the Lord's. Therefore, whatever is contrary to glory in your body, Whatever is making you a medical specimen, where they take you from one laboratory to the other, from one specialist to the other, from one hospital to the other, by your encounter here this morning, your liberty is established now. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. Your liberty is established now. Amen. One day, we have Paul the Apostle ministering in Acts chapter 14 between verse 8 and verse 11. And the Bible tells us that in the midst of the ministration, he saw a man. And this man, he said he saw that he had faith to be healed. In the middle of the message, the, soul, the, the, the faith was sufficient. I'd like you to understand that you don't need to wait to the end of the message to carry sufficient faith to carry your solution. He said in the middle of the message, his faith was adequate. Therefore, the message stopped there because the answer had come there. For somebody here, before this message is concluded, you have received your miracle already. I 
I said you have received your miracle already. So the word of God carries healing virtues. It carries healing virtues. As the word is being spoken, everyone who has faith to receive it is able to take their portion. And I know that you are taking your portion now. Say with me, I'm taking my portion now. I'm taking my portion now. I'm taking my miracle now. Now is my time. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. But number two thing we discover is the word of God is surgical. Say with me, it's surgical. Come on, say it louder, it's surgical. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. This is what the Bible says. The word of God is quick. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. He said, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and of the spirit and of the joint and of the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Look at the detail of that scripture. He said the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is more precise than any surgeon's scalpel. He said it divides asunder between the soul and the spirit. Whether it has a spiritual source or it is from the soul realm. He said it divides the bone and the marrow. There is no part of man that is deeper than the marrow. When you cut the flesh, you hit the bone. When you hit the bone and you hit the marrow, after the marrow, there's nothing left to hit. What it means there is this, that even as God's word is going forth, there is no part of your body that is unreachable. There is no part of your body that is unreachable. We are talking about the master surgeon here. The one who created the first surgery without any incidents. We are talking about Jehovah Rapha. We are talking about the great physician. We are talking about the living word himself. I don't know what you came here with this morning, but I, what I know is that the surgeon is in the house and his dividing sword is in the house. Therefore, whatever is damaged in your body that requires surgical intervention, by the word of the Lord right now, that surgery is being performed. Some years ago, God summoned our father came down to London in our convention and he began to minister prophetically concerning the master surgeon. And he made a statement at the end of that service. He said, the master surgeon will visit you tonight. And by the end of that visitation, Whatever represented that affliction will come to an end. I remember diverse testimonies came out of that encounter, but two in particular I cannot forget. A woman came, she had a spinal condition, had been afflicted for a number of years, and then suddenly she went to sleep in the night, and she said she saw a surgeon dressed in white, and she saw an assistant dressed beside him, and she saw them open the back, and begin to pull out a yellow like yellowish substance like spaghetti from the back. Close the back and the doctor asks the nurse, what time is it? And the time was mentioned. And the woman woke up, looked at the clock, exact time that was mentioned. Looked at the back, totally and completely healed. Because the surgeon had gone to work by the instrument of the word. I remember also in that same convention, a man who had been blind in one eye, I think it was the right eye or so, went to sleep and was also visited. By the time he opened his eyes in the morning, suddenly, what used to be single vision, the second eye began to see. And he was shocked because the surgeon who made the eye had come to repair the eye. There is no better mechanic than the manufacturer. Stop going to other vendors. You have a Toyota vehicle, there is no better one to repair than Toyota. Now the sole manufacturer of man is God. The doctor is simply a vendor. He's a vendor with limited in, in, in information. And many times with misinformation. But when you bring yourself to the one who is the maker, 
<laughs> you have come this morning into the theater of the great surgeon, the manufacturer of man. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whatever it is that is an affliction in your body, by the scalpel of the surgeon, which is the word of the Lord, you are set free in the name of Jesus. I said you are set free in the name of Jesus. You are set free in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. The word, the word, the word repairs. The word repairs. It is God's surgical instrument. Now in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says something verse, from verse 20, 21 and verse 22. Genesis 2, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. <laughs> and he took one rib and closed the flesh instead thereof. And with that rib, he made the woman and brought her to the man. Now, I want you to see that in light of John chapter 1. He said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. The question I will ask you is this. How did he open her? Open Adam? Did he take a knife and cut him? If you reference that scripture again, all things were made by him, the word. And without the word was not anything made that was made. How did he open him? How did he remove the rib? By putting his hand into him. How did he make the woman? Is it by molding with his hand? All things were made by the word. And without the word was not anything made that was made. So as the word is going now, God is opening you. As the word is going now, God is removing what should not be there. As the word is going now, God is closing you. As the word is going now, God is perfecting you. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. The word, the word, the word, it is God's surgical instrument. God's surgical instrument. I like your faith to be alive this morning because there is nothing you have come into this, onto this mountain with that you are permitted to go back with. Why? Because upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness and all the seed of winners must possess their possession. Say me, I'm taking my miracle now. Like your minute, I'm taking my miracle now. With faith within you, I'm taking my miracle now. I like your faith to come alive this morning. It doesn't need to be more than now. It doesn't need to take longer than now. He said, now is the day. Now is the time. Now is the hour. Now is the moment. You are taking it right now. Amen. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. amen. I said, somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. amen. So God's word, God's word is surgical. It is surgical. It has the capacity to cut through and to open up, and to close up, <laughs> and to perfect. And that's what's happening to somebody right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three thing we discover about the word of God is that the word of God is creative. It is creative. The Bible says in Genesis chapter one, 1 to 31, we see there, it, it said, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. He said, and the earth was without void, and God said. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, if he is the same as he was and will be, then it means that as he created is how he still creates. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse three, it said, by faith we believe that the worlds were framed. So not only heaven and earth, the worlds, everything that was created, the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen we are not made of things that do appear. 
I want you to understand this morning that the raw material that made you is the word. For all things were made by him. Somebody may say, Pastor, but does, if, 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 am I not made of dust? The question is, what made dust? It is the word that made dust. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So if there is something that is not present, God does not need to look for a donor to put a new one there. If your kidney is damaged and you go to the doctor, they ask you, we need to find a donor. And many times they tell you that the body even rejected what the donor put in. But when God is the one you come to, no donor is required. By the raw material, he fabricates one that fits you, one that matches you, one that works with you. That's why you hear people who come and say, that I, I had, no, I had no, no fallopian tube, I had no womb, and I have twins to show. What happened? The one who created by the word that does not need donor to replace began to speak and speak and speak and suddenly a new womb was created. Fallopian tubes, ovaries, were created by the word. I don't know what you came here with that is beyond repair. But what I know is that we have come to the one who created and the one who is creating and the one who will create. Therefore, this morning, whatever requires recreation in you is recreated now. I said it is recreated now. I'd like you now to begin to picture all of the virtues of the world. That when the word is coming, I'm receiving divine injection. When the word is coming, I'm having divine surgery. When the word is coming, I am having divine recreation. So if the injection is insufficient, the surgery is taking place. And perhaps what is done is beyond repair in the surgical procedure. It takes something created again by the word. It takes the liver and replaces it with a new one. By the word. We just heard the testimony of one of us. She says she had had a series of accidents in the year 2014. And by January 2015 was, was diagnosed with a damaged, damaged liver. And suddenly came to a covenant day of total health. And the word came. You see, the greatest mistake Satan can make is to make you contact the word. To allow you to contact the word. Now hear this. The greatest mistake he made is to let you enter God's presence this morning. Because you have come in contact with the word. And that means an end has come to your situation. And she said from that word, she heard a, a word from God, summon our father. And the word was electric. What was it? <laughs> that that damaged liver will be replaced now. And three days later, she had a dream and saw a huge man with a liver on a tree, special delivery from Heaven's factory. <laughs> By the time she woke up, rushed down to the hospital, declared totally fit. How can you be unfit with Heaven's package inside you? Impossible. I don't know what you were tested for before, but what I know is that this morning, upon Mount Zion, in the Heaven's theater, Whatever was damaged is being replaced now. I said it is being replaced now. It is being replaced now. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. The word is sufficient. Say with me, the word is sufficient. All I need is a word. The word is sufficient. All I need is the word. The word is sufficient. All I need is the word. Jesus came in contact with the man. Luke chapter 6. And the Bible said this man, his hand was withered. It meant everything about that hand was totally 
damaged, different from the, from the other hand. And he said, the man stood in the midst. And all of the various Pharisees were there watching, scrutinizing, analyzing, criticizing. And Jesus looked at all of them, verse 10, <laughs> and said to the man, he didn't touch him, stretch forth thy hand. The problem is the hand cannot stretch. It is shriveled. It has shrinked. Maybe it is one third of the size of the other. But look at the result. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. That's creative. When he stretched it, Initially, the hand was shorter, but in the stretching, the hand began to grow. When he stretched it, the hand initially was smaller, but in the stretching, the hand began to expand. If a hand is shorter, it means that the elbow was at a different length than the other hand. But as he was stretching, the elbow began to move. The fingers began to increase. The blood vessels began to expand. All of that creation by one word. I'd like you to understand that the doctor may have complicated your matter, but it is simple with God. Jesus did not say now, bone, grow longer. Finger, grow longer. Blood vessel, expand. Inside that stretch your hand was enough to grow the hand, to expand the fingers, to expand the blood vessels, to increase the flesh. Inside that one word, Therefore, this morning, what I am telling you is that inside the word you are hearing is the specialized package for your case. It is inside the word. All that that man did was to believe it. He didn't say, sir, I can't stretch my hand. Can't you see the hand? It's unstretchable. What did he do? He did so. It is simply responding in faith to God's word that actualizes the manifestation of your miracle responding in faith to God's word is what actualizes the manifestation of your miracle. The word is sufficient. The word is adequate. The word is enough. And I know that this morning, by the instrument of God's word, your perfection is established. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. Number four, what is in the word? The word contains life. Life. Quickening power. Life. The Bible says something in the book of John chapter one. I want you to take note of it. Verse four and five in particular. Verse one to three said, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was gone. He said, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. But look at what is inside the word now. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. And that light shineth in darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. In him was life. But how did the life manifest? It manifested as light to men. The meaning of that is this, whenever light comes from God's word, life comes into man's life. Life. When light comes, life comes. And that life we are referring to is quickening life. John chapter six and verse 63, Jesus said, he said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And look at what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 4. It said there, we that are in this tabernacle grown being burdened, not for that we should be unclothed or drop this body, but that we should be clothed upon, that mortality may be swallowed up of life. 
There is a way when life comes from God's word, it swallows up mortality. Mortality talks about, as it were, a propensity for death. A person now, for example, is physically alive, but his kidney is dead. He's physically alive, but his liver is dead. There are many people living today who have organs that are not living. But the Bible said when the word comes, it comes as light to inject life. And here is what the Bible says. This is how God does the life injection. <laughs> it said there in John chapter 5 and verse 25, the hour is coming and it's not long away. Now it is. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. The hour is coming and now is that hour. When the dead shall hear. I don't know what is dead in your body. I don't know what has been brought to nothing in your body. Maybe it's the kidney that is gone. Maybe it's the liver that is gone. I don't know what it is. But this is what the word of the Lord says. He said the dead shall hear. That dead kidney is hearing now. That dead liver is hearing now. That impotency is hearing now. That dead womb is hearing now. The dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. Say with me, I am living. My body is living. My system is living. I am living. I am living. I declare life. I declare life. I am living. I declare life. I am living. I declare life. I am living. They that hear, they that hear, they that hear, they that hear, shout hallelujah. They that hear shall live. And there is nothing that does not hear. He said, earth, hear the word of the Lord. He said, son of man, can these bones live again? He said, Lord, thou know it. He said, there is a way for, to make them live. Prophesy. Prophesy. And as I prophesy, the bones were joined to the bones. I prophesied, flesh covered the bones. I prophesied, skin covered the flesh. I prophesied, life came into them. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is that is damaged in your body, that is dead in your body, life surges now. Life surges now. Mortality, mortality is swallowed up of life. Mortality is swallowed up of life. I'd like you to be assured this morning there is an end to that affliction. It is called, it is called a special healing service. When you finish normally with the nurse, they send you to the doctor. When the doctor is confused, they send you to the specialist. God has called you into his presence today for his specialist attention. That is why I have the assurance of heaven this morning that for every one of us here that have our faith alive, we are picking our miracles now. I said we are picking our miracles now. We are picking our miracles now. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. So God's word, we find it carrying healing virtues. We find it carrying surgical capacity. We find it carrying creative ability. And we find it carrying quickening capacity. Of Jesus, we are told that the second or the last Adam was a quickening spirit. That's the word himself. A quickening spirit. A quickening spirit. A quickening spirit. That is a life 
forgiven spirit. Your affliction ends today. I said that affliction comes to an end today. That affliction comes to an end today. That affliction comes to an end today. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I love the testimony of the woman who was reading the book, Face Up With The Miracle. And right there, as the word of God was coming her way, nobody prayed for her. Neither did she even have time to pray. But right there, she was reading the book, crippled in her feet, sitting on a wheelchair, washing clothes. And then suddenly, it was time to move the clothes from washer to dryer. And she began to move the clothes. In the process, she thought, how did I leave where I was to start moving these clothes? And look behind her, wheelchair behind, and the woman is standing. Because when the word of God comes into a man's heart and he receives it, mixing it with faith, that is the end of affliction. That is the end of affliction. I'd like you to know this morning that today, this very day, marks for you the end of affliction. What must I do with the word in order to experience this? One, believe the word. That's the key. Mark chapter, chapter uh, 10 and verse 36. Chapter 5 verse 36, sorry. We find Jairus. And here, he had been contacted by people from his family. Saying, the daughter you went to ask for healing for, she's dead. Don't disturb the master. Look at Jesus' answer. And he said to the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Not many things. Just be not afraid, only believe. Faith is what it takes. Believe God's word. Do you believe this morning that the word of God is surgical? Do you believe that the word carries healing virtue? Do you believe that the word is creative? Do you believe that the word quickens? That's what it takes. Number two, act in faith. For faith without works is dead, being alone. James chapter two and verse 26. Faith without works is dead, as the spirit without the body is dead. James 2.26. So as you take in the word of God, believe it and act in faith. Today, your solution has finally come. Yeah. Lift your hand to heaven this morning and give God thanks for his word. Appreciate him, give him praise. Father, thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have prayed. In Jesus' precious name. Before we move further this morning, everyone who is here today, you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus. You have not yet made him the Lord and Savior of your life. You are running a risk without Christ. A life without Christ is a life full of crisis. Wherever you are this morning, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to have a new beginning with the Lord, quickly rise on your feet now. I want to pray with you. Quickly rise on your feet now. This is your moment, this is your hour, this is your day. Quickly, all over this place, rise on your feet right now. This is your moment, God has brought you here and he wants to bring you into the family. Remember, healing is the children's bread. Quickly rise your feet right now, all over this place. Also, there are those who are here who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. You cannot walk free without walking away from sin. If there are things in your life that displease God, you know that your heart is already being disconnected from him. You don't feel connected as you used to be before. That is a signal, God saying that you need to return so you can be restored. Wherever you are, quickly rise on your feet right now. You want to return so that you can be restored. You want a new beginning with Jesus, quickly rise on your feet. I want to pray with you. This is your moment and this is your hour. If you have done that in the first and second call, please make your way to the hour closest to you. Officials beckon upon them and direct them. Make your way to the hour closest to you. I want to pray with you from right there. Please make your way to the hour closest to you. Officials, please beckon quickly.
Back on quickly, assist them, direct them. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the Father. Quickly, please get down to the aisle as we get set to pray. I'd like you to please suspend filling your form for a moment and just lift up your right hand to heaven. And I want you to pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Louder, Lord Jesus. I come to you today as a sinner. I know you died for me. And on the third day, you rose again. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone here, Lord, that has responded to this call, you have brought them again into your family. Give them grace to walk with you all the days of their life. No turning back in the name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a new day for you. Please complete your form and give it to the official closest to you and then you return to your seat. Shall we all rise on our feet this morning as we get set to receive prophetic blessing with from God's servant? Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. Because with him, all things are possible. He is our final bus stop in our quest for total health. His name is Jesus. He said, whosoever has seen me, has seen my father. His name is Jesus. There is nowhere else to go for any help that is not available with God. There is nowhere else to go. So welcome to your final stop. It's your final bus stop. And you are returning from here as a testimonial. From that word from heaven, many have received their healings already. If you believe the light from that word, Lift up your two hands and begin to consciously appropriate your healing, your restoration of health, and wholeness. Now, begin to declare it. What you won't declare, God cannot confirm. Begin to declare it. Begin to declare it. Begin to declare it. I accept you today as my great physician. I believe in the medicinal values of your world. I believe in the surgical mystery of your world. I believe in the creative power of your world. I believe in the quickening power of your world. Therefore, I'm out of this affliction forever. I'm here at my final bus stop. There is nowhere else I'm going.
Jesus. 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 Violently take your healing now. 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 Take total restoration of your head now. Take it, take it, take it, take it. It's yours. The world has gone for. Your healing is springing forth. The world has gone forth. Your healing is springing forth. Precious name, we have prayed. Amen. No health condition that followed you here this morning is permitted to return back with you. Every sickness, every weakness, every terminal disease that followed you here won't follow you back home. <laughs> By one encounter, I took my total head packet from Jesus. It took my infirmity and bear my sicknesses. And I screamed, yeah, I can never be sick and it ended there. Everyone who has received the word and believed the word this day is declared your liberation day. Yeah. Whatever the Lord does shall be forever. Yeah. Your delivered package today shall be forever. Someone met Tiel Osborne and said to her, to him, that 60 years ago when you came into this city, I was a woman that God opened my blind eyes and I'm still saying today. 60 years. 60 years. Now, the testimony of your deliverance today will last your lifetime. I was, and let me use that word, that boy that Jesus healed of tuberculosis 48 years ago. And I'm still bouncing today. Whatever the Lord does shall be forever. Therefore, your total head package delivered to you through your faith today shall be for your lifetime. Of Jesus Christ. <laughs> now, as a point of contact for your faith, if there be any part of your body that is buffeted, afflicted, oppressed, Jesus, the great physician, is in the house. The prophetic instruction is you place your hand on it, and the healing virtue will flow. To perfect what remains. The healing word has gone for. Many have taken their own. Some just need a second touch. For perfection. Whether it's your final cord, put your hand on it, your chest, where your heart is, your belly, where your organs, the kidneys and everything are. That woman said, I saw a huge man carrying a brand new liver on a tray. 
and I go to the hospital, your liver is in perfect condition. It ended there. Now, put your hand on it. Wherever you are hurting, your ears, your head, your heart, or you carry a terminal disease in your body with a death sentence passed on you by doctors. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever that disease is called, I cast out now the spirit of infirmity behind it. I command the spirit to come out of you and enter no more. I decree every blind eye be upon. be on stop. Every dumb tongue be loosed. Every terminal disease be terminated. Every damaged organ be repaired. Every irreparable organ be replaced. the name of Jesus Christ. The master sojourn is still actively at work in the midst of his people. So every damaged part of your body is declared surgically repaired. Every part that is damaged beyond repair is declared recreated. Receive it instantly. Now, receive your portion instantly. Now, receive your portion instantly. You shall not die. But live and declare the works of God. Everybody we know your case is different. What? Afflict others we never be able to afflict you anymore. In the name of Jesus. Every pain is terminated in your body. Every discomfort is destroyed. Damaged kidney is replaced. Every palpitating heart is replaced. Every dead liver is replaced. Cancer is caused from its root. HIV AIDS is caused from its root. Hepatitis B is caused from the root. Every lump in your breast disappears. Every growth in your body disappears. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands, it's done. Celebrate it. Magnify him. It's done. The battle is over. The battle over your health is over. The battle over your life is over. You shall not die but live and declare the words of God. You shall not live like a clay. You will never live like a vegetable. Your case is settled forever. Thank you, Jesus. Come and give the Lord a big, big hand, everybody. Thank you, Father. Hey, Jesus, precious name, you have received your healing. I know, because God tells me things, that there are waves of instant testimonies here. Before you get to the gate, your outlet from here, it is established, it is perfected. And so, 
Send us your instant testimony. A number of us, we need to get down to behind the whole entrance and the document your testimonies. We might call you in, in the fourth service. Many of you, I want you to please, any testimony you don't share, you stand the risk of losing them. So share your testimonies lavishly. It will perfect and establish it forever. You don't share it, you lose it. You share it, it's perfected, and you keep it. Please share your testimonies. Testimonies at www.com. I mean, we will get it and celebrate God with you. You are living here a change man. The month is declared your month of memoria. You will never forget the hand of God on your life this month or your life. It is one month you will never forget in a hurry. It is one month you will never forget in a hurry. In Jesus' precious name. Now to keep your health, stay in service. Stay what? God is eternally committed to keeping those who serve him fit. Stay in service. I'm divine, you are the branches. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, I take away. And every branch that bears fruit, I keep fit so you can keep bearing more fruit. You want to stay fit? Stay in service. Stay in service. Don't be a sit down look believer. Stay in service. Be a partaker, not an onlooker. Stay in service. God has vowed to keep those who are in service fit. And that includes you. Amen. That includes you. Amen. He has kept me fit all these years because I'm a fruit bearing branch. I still went out for outreach yesterday. I'm a fruit bearing branch. I'm walking day and night to advance his kingdom by choice. Serving God is not a gift, it's a choice. Yes, you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water and I will take sickness away from you. God takes personal responsibility in keeping you fit if you will serve him. Not sit down and look big and pretend big. Serve him. Yes, serve him. Amen. Serve him. Amen. Serve him in praying kingdom around him prayers. Serve him in winning souls. Amen. Serve him in ensuring souls are established in the faith. Amen. Serve him in the various service units. Amen. Serve him delightsomely. Amen. Serve him where I serve him. Amen. We share the same heritage. Yes, sir. Serve him where I serve him. You will have the same heritage. Amen. We got 337 souls yesterday in our house. Amen. I'm doing that every day. It's with delight, with joy. Nobody has ever pushed me to do it. Neither can you discourage me from doing it. It's your view. Look at this man. Look at him. He doesn't even know himself. Uh, I know Jesus. I know no man after the flesh. Believe yes, myself. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. So I step down with your kind of people <laughs> and love them. Step down with market women and all that and love them and tell them the love of Jesus. Bring them to Christ. You want to stay fit? Stay in service. Stay in service. There is no one luckier than the other. Only that one is smarter than the other. Yes. Stay in service. Stay in service, God. 80-year-old people are sweeping in this church. Stay in service. Stay in service. And you keep fit. He keeps you fit. When God keeps you fit, no demon can make you unfit. No witches in your village can make you unfit. When God keeps you fit, no demon can make you unfit. Now, from today, your search for earth has finally ended. Now go in peace. Return with your testimonies of perfection. It's over. Lift up those two hands. Now help me give that goodness to your neighbor. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Forever and ever. Amen. Peace. My case is different. Because I'm the demon of the law, and as a covenant child, what afflicts others is not permitted to afflict. Now, hold it. What afflicts others 
is not permitted to afflict me. Say one more time, what afflicts others? Now go for it. your case is finally different. Amen. I'm expecting you to be part of the prayers going on and entrench yourself in it. Your one hour private prayer and a one hour prayer all through the week. Spiritual week of emphasis, your big time for a change of story. Don't miss it for anything. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please move forward so we can have the next service come.